Hello viewers, uh, in this session uh, we will continue with the properties of Mobius transformations. So, uh, last time uh, we have uh, defined the cross ratio and we have seen uh, how we can use the cross ratio uh, to prove some properties uh, of Mobius transformations. Okay. So, we will continue with that uh, and uh, we will show that uh, Mobius transformations uh, in the session uh, will show that Mobius transformations take circles to circles. So, images of circles on uh, the Riemann sphere uh, via Mobius transformations are uh, precisely circles. Okay. So, uh, in order to show that we will uh, prove the following uh, important uh, proposition. So, um, let z 1, z 2, z 3 okay, and z 4 be four distinct points. in C union infinity. Okay. Then the cross ratio z 1, z 2, z 3, z 4 is real, okay, is a real number if and only if all the four points z 1, z 2, z 3 and z 4 uh, lie on a circle. Okay. So, this proposition uh, is useful in the following sense, it, it, it tells, it gives a criterion in terms of uh, the cross ratio, um, when uh, four points, four distinct points actually lie on a circle. Okay. So, uh, here is the proof of this fact. Okay. So, uh, consider S from C union infinity to C union infinity defined by this cross ratio. We know that these are bijections. Okay. So, uh, be defined by uh, S of z is equal to uh, z z 2, z 3, z 4. Okay. So, uh, we will first uh, see that um, if we show that T of r infinity r union infinity okay, is a circle for every Mobius transformation T. then we are done. Okay. Then the follows. I okay. will explain why. Okay. So, if we are able to show that the image of uh, the r union infinity, the real line uh, in the complex plane union the point at infinity is a circle for every Mobius transformation. Okay, uh, circle in the sense, of course, it is a circle on the Riemann sphere. So, you also include straight lines union point at infinity. Okay. So, uh, if uh, the cross ratio is real, z 1, z 2, z 3, z 4 is real, okay. uh, then S inverse uh, takes real numbers to a circle. Right. So, because every Mobius transformation, uh, okay. so if we show that every Mobius transformation takes uh, r union infinity to a circle, S inverse takes real numbers union infinity to a circle. Okay. In particular, it takes real numbers uh, to, the, to, to the circle okay. and S inverse maps 1 to z 2, okay. 0 to z 3 and uh, infinity to z 4. 
right, because s maps the other way around z 2 to 1, z 3 to 0 and z 4 to infinity respectively. Okay. So, uh, so s inverse maps uh, you know 1 0 infinity to those points. Uh, so, s inverse maps uh, r union infinity. Okay. We already assumed that it maps r union infinity, infinity to a circle. So, it maps r union infinity uh, to the circle determined by the three points uh, z 2, z 3, z 4. They are distinct uh, determined by z 2, z 3 and z 4 and three points always determine a circle uh, in the complex plane union infinity. And s in I mean and the cross ratio we know is real. Okay. So, s inverse okay, of uh, this real number z 1, z 2, z 3, z 4 okay, of this real number has to be uh, okay, uh, is on the circle uh, okay, uh, on the circle gamma, where gamma is this circle determined by these three things. Okay. So, let us call that gamma. So, is on the circle gamma. Okay. So, what that means is s inverse of s of z 1 right s of z is that cross ratio. So, s inverse of s of z 1 uh, belongs to gamma which implies z 1 belongs to gamma. Okay. So, if the cross ratio is real uh, and if we assume that uh, every Mobius transformation uh, takes r union infinity um, to a circle okay, then uh, z 1 uh, has to be on the circle determined by z 2, z 3, z 4, which means z 2, z 3, z 4 and z 1 lie on a circle. Okay. So, now, in the other direction, if um, z 1, z 2, z 3, z 4 are on a circle, okay, then uh, what we have to show is the cross ratio is a real number. Well, s takes uh, z 2 to 1 right like above z 2 to 1 uh, z 3 to 0 and z 4 to infinity okay infinity and then s inverse of r union infinity is going to be a circle okay like i already said is going to be a circle okay and then it is this is uh, okay this is determined by z 2, z 3, z 4 rather. Okay. So, uh, s of that circle okay, s of gamma is equal to uh, uh, r union infinity. So, s of z 1 okay, which is on the circle gamma will belong to r union infinity. Well, it cannot be infinity because these are distinct points and Mobius transformations are one to one functions okay, and z 4 already uh, goes to infinity. So, uh, s of z 1 belongs to r it is a real number, okay, which means the cross ratio is a real number. Okay. So, if we assume or if we prove that uh, T of r union infinity is a circle for every Mobius transformation T, uh, then we are done. So, we will uh, we'll show that part here. Okay. So, let, let T of z be a z plus b divided by c z plus d. Okay. It is a Mobius transformation. Okay, uh, and let uh, z equals x belongs to R. Okay, so we we'll, we can treat infinity separately. Okay, so let us uh, say x x uh, z is x belongs to R. Okay, and uh, w is s t inverse of x. Okay, then x is equal to uh, t w okay, which implies t of w okay, t w or t of w is equal to its own conjugate because it is a real number x is a real number. Okay. So, uh, t is equal to its own conjugate t of w is equal to its own conjugate. So, let us write down what that means a w plus b divided by uh, a c w plus d is equal to uh, a bar w bar plus b bar divided by c bar w bar plus d bar via the properties via the properties of 
conjugation. Okay. So, after rearrangement this gives us a c bar minus a bar c modulus of w squared plus a d bar minus b bar c times w plus b c bar minus d a bar times w bar plus b d bar minus b bar d is equal to 0. Okay. So, let us call this equation star. Looking at this equation, what we want to show is that uh, w is, um, is a point on a circle. Okay. So, the locus of w which satisfies this equation is actually a circle. Okay. So, we are actually showing this statement t of r union infinity is a circle by showing that t inverse of r union infinity uh, is a circle for every uh, Mobius transformation t, but since every Mobius transformation is an inverse of yet another Mobius transformation, okay, um, we get the result. Okay, we get the result that we desire. So, firstly there are two cases to consider um, if a c bar is real, this is the first case. Okay. Then a c bar will be equal to a bar c, it will be equal to its own conjugate. Okay. So, in this case then a c bar minus a bar c is equal to 0. So, this coefficient here is going to be 0. Okay. So, in this event we observe that uh, we have conjugates here. Okay. So, one is the conjugate of the other, okay. two terms which are conjugate to each other. So, let alpha equals uh, 2 times a d bar minus b bar c. Okay. That 2 is just to uh, avoid a, a multiple of 2, we will see in a moment. Okay. And let beta is equal to uh, i times b d bar minus b bar d. Once again, I have multiplied that by an i to uh, put this other term here in a nice form, but notice that this number is a difference of uh, conjugates. Okay. So, that gives an purely imaginary number. Okay. So, it gives the imaginary part of uh, b d bar okay, uh, 2 times that. So, that is uh, uh, that's a imaginary number. So, beta here is a, a real number. So, then uh, what we get by substituting alpha and beta like this, what we get is uh, this is alpha by 2 w plus alpha bar w bar by 2 plus uh, beta divided by i is equal to 0. Okay. So, then I um, will multiply by i to get i times alpha by 2 w plus alpha bar w bar by 2 uh, plus beta is equal to 0. I apologize, this should be a minus, this is b c bar minus d a bar, which is you know the minus of this. So, I will remove these underlines. Okay, this is a minus alpha bar w bar, this is a minus okay. and then I get alpha w minus alpha bar w bar okay. and then I had an i here, I had to multiply an i here, i by 2 times all this plus beta is equal to 0. Okay. And then uh, alpha w minus alpha bar w bar is uh, 2 times the uh, imaginary part of uh, alpha w okay, uh, times i by 2 plus beta is equal to 0. This is uh, i times the imaginary part of alpha w plus beta is equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, so, we can sum this up by saying imaginary part of alpha w okay, uh, minus beta. So, by equating the uh, real parts, uh, we have uh, that is equal to 0. Okay. So, we recognize this as uh, I mean uh, the locus of these uh, points w is a is a line right. Uh, imaginary part recall from a uh, section on geometry we said that imaginary part of w is equal to 0 uh, gives a real line okay. and likewise imaginary part of uh, alpha times w. Okay, what that gives is um, it is a line okay, uh, passing through origin of that sort okay, is equal to 0. 
okay and imaginary part of alpha w minus beta is equal to 0 gives a line which is uh, that sort everything is transferred by a vector beta okay so that's beta so every point is moved by a vector beta okay and uh, here you multiply by a number alpha. So, the real line actually turns okay? and then um, alpha w minus beta will transfer the line uh, by beta okay? and that signifies a straight line. Okay? So, the locus here is a straight line. Okay? So, in the event that a c bar is real, what we have is a straight line. So, in the other case, if a c bar is not real, a c bar is not real, then the coefficient of mod w squared uh, in um, in star okay, is not 0. Okay. So, then uh, then a c bar minus a bar c is not equal to uh, 0. Okay. So, that is the point. So, uh, then let let gamma be a d bar minus b bar c divided by uh, a c bar minus a bar c. Okay. So, we can now divide by a c bar minus a bar c okay. and let delta be equal to b bar d minus b d bar okay, divided by a c bar minus a bar c. Okay. So, then uh, notice that delta is a, is a real quantity, because uh, the numerator is a purely imaginary quantity, it is two times the imaginary part of a certain complex number okay. and likewise the denominator is a purely imaginary quantity. Okay. So, uh, the i's cancel, uh, the two's cancel etcetera, so you have a, a real quantity, so delta is real. It's a real number, okay, and then by letting this and substituting this in star, okay, uh, using star, what we have is. So let me go back to star. Sorry, okay. So this is I am dividing equations star by a c bar minus a bar c, okay, and then uh, the coefficient of w, okay, and w bar show up something in terms of gamma, okay because I am dividing by a c bar minus a bar c okay, that is the coefficient okay. and this last coefficient uh, this last constant uh, will be in terms of delta. Okay. So, what I get is I have modulus of w squared plus gamma bar w plus gamma w bar okay. like we observed earlier these are conjugates of each other these two terms are conjugates of each other okay. and then uh, finally, I have minus delta is equal to 0. Okay. The way I have assumed delta is b bar d minus b d bar uh, that is the negative of what I have there. Okay. We will see why uh, in a moment. Okay. So, then uh, this is the same as okay, um, modulus of w squared okay, plus modulus of gamma squared, I am adding a modulus of gamma squared and these are conjugates of each other. So, when I add them I get two times real part of uh, gamma w bar okay. and then minus modulus of gamma squared, I have added a modulus of gamma squared there. So, I get that minus delta is equal to 0. Okay. So, this we recognize is the modulus of w plus gamma whole squared. Okay, and that equals modulus of gamma squared plus uh, delta. Okay, and modulus of gamma squared is a real number plus a delta is a real number. So this looks like uh, the equation of a circle. Okay, so this is modulus of W plus gamma. Okay, I'll raise this part is equal to uh, square root of modulus of gamma squared plus delta. It's a positive real number. We'll show. Okay. So, um, one can check okay. and uh, so w lies on a circle centered at minus gamma okay, and uh, of radius 
modulus gamma squared plus delta square root. Okay. So, only if modulus of gamma squared plus delta is a positive real number, okay, but that is easy. Okay. So, uh, you can uh, check that modulus of gamma squared okay, plus delta, well that is equal to uh, modulus of a d bar minus b bar c divided by a c bar minus a bar c whole squared okay, plus delta modulus of delta. Well, delta is b d bar minus b bar d divided by a c bar minus a bar c. When I take the common denominator, uh, what I have is modulus of a squared modulus of d squared plus modulus of b squared modulus of c squared uh, minus 2 times the real part of uh, a d bar minus b bar c a d bar times b bar c b, b c bar rather okay. and then uh, divided by modulus of a c bar minus a bar c squared okay, uh, plus b d bar. Okay. So, I can actually directly add this. Okay. So, I get uh, plus b a c bar d bar etcetera minus b bar a c bar d uh, minus b a bar c bar d okay, uh, plus a bar b bar. So, this two times real part of a d bar b c bar cancels with uh, this plus this. Okay, so, this I mean terms with a plus sign in front of them okay, that cancels with that okay, b bar okay. and then uh, the terms with the uh, minus sign in front of them those remain and that gives me modulus of a d minus b c that gives me uh, that divide by modulus of a c bar minus a bar c squared. Okay. So, the square root of uh, modulus gamma squared plus delta uh, is equal to modulus of a d minus b c by a c bar minus a bar c, uh, which is a positive quantity. Okay. So, so that uh, shows that uh, t inverse okay, uh, in, in either of these two cases, uh, what we have shown is that the locus of w according to star, okay, the locus of w according to star is a circle. Okay. So, uh, locus of w is a circle in either case. Okay. Uh, it is a generalized circle on the Riemann sphere. Okay. So, you, you have straight lines in the complex plane union infinity or you have uh, circles. Okay. Uh, is a circle. Okay. Uh, so, uh, T inverse takes uh, R union infinity to a circle. Since, there was no assumption about x the real number x, uh, T inverse of R union infinity is a circle. Okay. And since, every Mobius transformation is inverse of some Mobius transformation, uh, it is true that the image of R union infinity uh, is a circle for every Mobius transformation. Okay. So, since every Mobius transformation okay, is uh, the inverse of some Mobius transformation and every inverse has this property. Okay, uh, uh, every Mobius transformation then okay, takes uh, R union infinity to a circle and that completes uh, the proof of this proposition. Next, we will show the following proposition okay, based on this one uh, okay, which we have been aiming at. Uh, a Mobius transformation 
okay, uh, maps circles onto circles. Now, this is easy uh, or it follows easily from the previous proposition. Okay. So, uh, let z 1, z 2 or z 2, z 3, z 4 okay, be three distinct points. on a given circle, okay, on a circle gamma. Okay. So, uh, let S be uh, a Mobius transformation. So, you take a general Mobius transformation and let uh, W 2, okay, I will just say W j is equal to s z j for j is equal to 2 3 4. Okay. So, let w j be the uh, image of z 2 z 3 z 4 or uh, z j in okay, uh, under s. Okay. Uh, now, w 2 w 3 w 4 determine a circle any three points determine a circle, uh, these w 2, w 3, w 4, they have to be distinct because z 1, z 2, z 3, z 4 were distinct okay. so, uh, and s is a Mobius transformation. Uh, so, these determine a circle in C union infinity. Okay, we will call that as uh, say gamma 1. Okay. So, uh, we will claim, the claim is that s maps so, S for now maps just three points z 2, z 3, z 4 to w 2, w 3, w 4 and there is a circle determined by z 2, z 3, z 4 and uh, 1 by w 2, w 3, w 4. Okay. So, the claim now is that S takes all of gamma on to gamma 1. So, here is z 1, z 2 and z 3 on a circle okay. and then all we know is that the image of these three points is is w 1, w 2 w or w 2, w 3, w 4. Okay. And uh, there is a circle which passes through these three, okay. this is gamma 1. Okay. The claim is that S maps exactly that circle onto that circle. Okay. Now, uh, the proof is very easy uh, using that other proposition. Uh, the cross ratio z, z 2, z 3, z 4 okay, is equal to the cross ratio s z, s z 2, s z 3 and s z 4. Okay. By a previous proposition, we uh, saw this. Okay. Okay. So, this tells us that um, if z belongs to gamma, okay, then uh, by the previous proposition, uh, this cross ratio z, z 2, z 3, z 4, okay, z is a point on the circle determined by z 2, z 3, z 4. So, this is real, is, is a real number, okay, this is real. Okay. And so, L h s is real, okay. so this number is also a real number. Okay. What that tells is that uh, implies uh, R H s is real and what that implies is S z lies by the previous proposition it is z lies on the circle uh, determined by S z 2, S z 3 and S z 4. Okay. So, S z belongs to gamma 1. Okay. So, that completes the proof of this proposition. Okay, so, it follows directly from the previous uh, proposition. Okay. So, uh, now then we can also uh, do the following uh, for any given circles gamma and gamma 1 or gamma prime let us say in C union infinity. Okay. There is a Mobius transformation that is easy okay, is Mobius transformation T such that T of gamma is equal to gamma prime. 
ओके फर्दर मोर ओके देर इज अक मोबियस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन taking three specified points on to uh, on gamma okay on gamma on to three specified points okay these points have to be distinct okay uh, distinct points uh, on gamma prime okay the proof is uh, it just follows from what we have uh, done already okay so uh, the the proof is an exercise uh, for uh, okay uh, for the viewer okay so it just follows from what we have done okay so given three points on this circle and then three points on that circle there is a unique mobius transformation uh, which takes these three points to those three points okay and uh, well uh, if you give a circle there are many ways to specify circle okay um, uh, as in by many triples of points specify this circle okay so uh, if you want a circle to be mapped onto another circle there are many mobius transformations doing the job okay so uh, that's uh, this proposition what what we have shown so far is that circles on c union infinity on the riemann sphere are actually mapped onto circles Uh, via mobius transformations okay so uh, we will rough, roughly state some theorems which will tell us that uh, the inside and outside of the circles okay uh, also are also mapped on to inside and outside of circles uh, via the mobius transformation okay so we'll make that notion uh, a little concrete okay so firstly uh let me uh, make a diagram like this okay so a point z here is a straight line in c union infinity or a circle in c union infinity which is a straight line in the complex plane okay so if you have a point z uh, from high school geometry we know that uh, well, we call a point z star symmetric to z okay uh, with respect to this line okay uh, if the if the line joining z z star okay is perpendicularly uh, bisected by uh, this line okay so z and z star we call are symmetric okay and there is a similar notion uh, when it comes to circles okay so this notion actually transfers to circles on the riemann sphere you take a point which is outside the circle Okay, so here is z. You draw a tangent from the circle to uh, the point to the circle. Okay, and you drop a perpendicular onto the line joining z and the center of the circle. Okay, and this point z star that you get is called symmetric. So this is a notion uh, which equates to this. a uh, notion uh, for a straight line okay when you look at it on the complex uh, on the on the riemann sphere okay so z and z star then are called symmetric okay and when when we write this in the language of cross ratio we have the following uh, definition okay so let gamma be a circle through points z2 z3 and z4 the points z and z star are okay in c union infinity are said to be symmetric if z star z2 z3 z4 is equal to z z2 z3 z4 conjugate the conjugate of this is equal to the cross ratio with z star okay so in the this is essentially the the symmetry the geometric symmetry here uh, in the language of cross ratio okay and the equivalence of this is uh, 
uh, proved in uh, the textbook that I am following for this discussion, uh, namely in jo uh, John Conway's book, uh, Functions of One Complex Variable. Okay. So, the interested uh, uh, viewer can actually uh, work with this out as an exercise or look into the book. One, uh, one thing that uh, one should observe is that uh, check that okay here z2 z3 z4 determine a circle okay and i am defining symmetry uh, apparently by choosing a particular z2 z3 z4 on the circle okay so check that uh, this uh, definition okay of symmetry is independent of the choice of z 2, z 3, z 4. Okay. So, uh, in the definition I should say set to be symmetric with respect to gamma that is important sorry about that. Okay. So, this is uh, are said to be symmetric with respect to gamma if that happens. There are other ways of specifying gamma okay. you can take other z 2, z 3, z 4. So, if you take z 2 prime, z 3 prime and z 4 prime try to show that uh, this equality still holds if it holds for z 2, z 3, z 4. Okay. So, then uh, I am going to state uh, what happens to points inside and outside of a circle okay, uh, via a Mobius transformation via the mapping. Uh, Okay, uh, which is a Mobius transformation. Okay. So, here is a symmetry principle I will not prove this, but I will just state this if a Mobius transformation okay, T takes a circle gamma 1 onto a circle gamma 2, okay, then any pair of points Okay, which are symmetric with respect to gamma 1 okay, are mapped on to a pair of points by T. Okay, they are mapped on to uh, two points by T. Okay, um, which are symmetric with respect to gamma 2. So, the image of a circle is a circle and image of two points which are symmetric with respect to the initial circle uh, are now uh, symmetric with respect to the image circle y r t. Okay. So, that is the uh, picture we have okay. and uh, the proof is it is very easy. So, T z star T z 2, T z 3, T z 4 okay, that is going to be we have to show that this is equal to T z, T z 2, T z 3, T z 4 conjugate, okay, but this is equal to z star z 2, z 3, z 4 y i property we had earlier okay, uh, that the cross ratio remains uh, invariant under when the when all the points are moved via a Mobius transformation okay and this is equal to z z2 z3 z4 because z star and z are symmetric with respect to gamma 1 okay and that is equal to once again by that uh, invariance via uh, Mobius transformation uh, we have tz tz2 tz3 tz4 conjugate Okay. So, since z z 2 z 3 z 4 is equal to the cross ratio t z t z 2 t z 3 z t z 4. Okay. So, that completes the proof. Okay. So, then we are going to make uh, a definition okay, of uh, orientation. Okay. So, now uh, well if you have a circle okay, it stays unoriented but in order to identify the inside and outside we will orient the circle first okay so if gamma is a circle if gamma is a circle 
okay then an orientation for gamma okay is an ordered triple of points z1 z2 z3 this is an ordered triple okay such that z1 z2 z3 are distinct points on gamma okay so what you are doing is you are picking three points z1 z2 z3 okay on a circle okay and specifying them as an ordered triple so the order tells you that you go from z1 to z2 and then z2 to z3 and come back to z1 so that specifies a particular order when z1 z2 z3 are distinct okay and so it specifies an orientation on that circle okay and when you imagine walking on that circle in the complex plane or in c union infinity okay so uh, uh, with your uh, with your head up okay so to say okay then um, you have a region to the left and you have a region to the right okay, and then what we have is the following we have the orientation principle okay uh, so let gamma 1 and gamma 2 be two circles in c union infinity okay and let t be a mobius transformation okay such that t of gamma 1 is equal to uh, gamma 2 okay let z1 z2 z3 be an ordered uh, okay be an orientation of gamma 1 or for gamma 1 okay then t takes the right side and left side okay uh, of gamma 1 onto the right side and left side of gamma 2 with respect to the orientation the orientation of gamma 2 given by uh, T z 1, T z 2, T z 3. Okay. So, a circle can be mapped on to, so you pick a circle with a orientation z 1, z 2, z 3. Okay. It can be mapped on to a circle in two ways, uh, okay. looking at the orientation, it could be T z 1, T z 2, T z 3. Okay, or you could have a circle T z 1, T z 2, T z 3. So, it depends on the Mobius transformation. This circle will give you uh, sorry this kind of orientation and this circle will give you this kind of orientation. Okay. So, there are two ways. Uh, two different orientations induced on the same circle and that orientation depends on t okay and uh, this uh, orientation principle which we are uh, which you are stating here uh, without proof okay that tells you that the left side here for example this is the left side on on this in this picture that is mapped onto the left side here uh, in this case the left side happens to be outside of this circle okay and in this case it happens to be the inside of the circle Okay, but the left sidedness and right sidedness are preserved by Mobius transformation and that is stated by the orientation principle. Okay, so, once again for rigorous proofs one can consult uh, uh, Conway okay. and so um, here is a, a, a quick example. Uh, the transformation 1 plus i times z plus 1 plus i divided by uh, z plus i this is a mobius transformation okay it take it maps i to uh, 1 uh, z, uh, minus 1 to 0 and uh, and i to 
infinity or minus i to infinity okay and um, it maps so it maps the unit circle okay here is minus i and minus 1 sorry this is plus i here is minus 1 and here is minus i it maps them to uh, 1 0 and infinity so infinity is in this direction you can think of it in this direction okay and so it maps this circle okay on to this line okay in this direction with that orientation okay so uh, what it does is it maps the unit disk okay uh, which appears to the left of this circle now on to the lower half plane okay so that's an example uh, so, we will uh, conclude uh, this discussion on Mobius transformations uh, with this example. I will stop here.